You didn't get reflushed, you got refreshed. <laughs> Glory. Love praising the king. Everybody get touched? Amen. <laughs> Glory. This is the night the Lord has made. Because we're still here. <laughs> Praise God. Whew. <laughs> John 14. Whoa. John 14. Glory. In verse 6. John 14, 6. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Jesus said to him, I am the what? The way, the truth, and the life. No one, I mean no one, comes to the Father except for through me. The way, the truth, and the life. I want you to understand that the first thing he speaks of is a way. In other words, he's the only way. <laughs> way has to do with course and position. Way has to do, in other words, if somebody says he went that way. It's a place of direction. You know, when we're looking for streets, we're trying to find the way a certain, to reach a certain destination or an address. Ways is also associated with what we call how we walk. It is a righteous way. Does everybody understand that? There is a righteous way that we walk. It's not always about who's right or who's wrong. Amen. It's the way we walk that is important. Amen. Does everybody get it? Matthew 7. Matthew 7, uh, verse 13. So it's not always about who's right or who's wrong, but how we walk. And the way is a righteous way. Is everybody there? Matthew 7, verse 13. Let's speak it. Enter the what? Narrow. By the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way. That leads to what? Destruction. Do you understand it? He's talking about how we walk. And there are many who what? Go into that way. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the true righteous way. Which leads to life, and there are few who what? Who find it. That's disheartening. There are few who find it, but there are many who find the other way. He says, Beware of what? False prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. In other words, by their walk you will know them. By their decisions you will know them. By their responses you will know them. By their reactions you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So you got to understand that he's still talking about the way. 
This is a way of life. This is a way we walk. He said, many proclaim the way, but don't walk the way. And those will not enter my kingdom. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who what? Practice lawlessness. Why? Because that is not the way. God's way is righteous. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the what? On the rock. So there's a way of building, isn't there? And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock, which is Christ and the anointing. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, does not build according to the way, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. He said, difficult is the righteous way, the way of life will produce fruit. In conclusion, is the way that the house is built. How you build the house. Are you going to build it God's way or your way? It's either Yahweh or the highway, right? Unless the word says, unless the Lord's build a house, we labor in vain. And in building, there's tools. There's materials. There's blueprints. And then there's instructions. And they all determine the way something is done. That's why our instructions is counsel. Our tools are the gifts of the Spirit. The material is the Word. The blue plants is God's will. Jesus was constant and consistent in the way. He was consistent because he always said he was, came to do the will of the Father. Everybody tried to tell Jesus and explain Jesus. And he said, no, I've come to do his will, not mine. Because he came to do the way. He came to fulfill the way. And he came to make the way for me and you to walk in the same path he did. Thank God he went to the cross and we can bypass it. Amen. We just have to constantly deny ourselves daily. <laughs> but the devil always challenges us as he challenges Jesus. He challenges the righteous way of doing things. I'm going to say that again. He challenges the righteous way of doing things. That's why you must be close to the Lord. Because for some people, they might not understand the righteous way of doing things. There is a righteous way and there is a deceptive way. In other words, one of the things that the devil tried to do with Jesus all the time was try to bait him. He tried to what? Bait him. But Jesus didn't bite the bait. Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. Before deception, there must be a bait. It's called the bait of deception. That's what we're going to talk about. There are actually three baits of deception that we well, everyone knows about. It's called lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. Those three get categories are the bait of deception. It is not deception itself. It is the bait of deception. Then deception follows. Once you bit the bait, deception will follow. Those are the three categories. And remember that all lust is desire. In fact, addiction is nothing but an overwhelming desire, isn't it? That's lust. 
That's why these categories are associated with lust. Lust is an overwhelming desire. All lust is desire. All desire is to fulfill an emotion. Because that want usually is a connection of an emotion. So we understand that these categories are baits. There's lots of baits that lead to and connect us to deception. And unless you stay filled with the Spirit of God, you won't see or discern the bait. You may see the deception and already bit the bait. Does everybody get it? And you're telling everybody else how they're deceived when you are. Matthew 4. Matthew chapter 4. There is the way of righteousness and there's the way of deception. Amen. Matthew 4, verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were what? They were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You know, when you go fishing, you need something. It's called bait. Hello? Now, what usually would occur, even before they would throw nets in to catch fish, they would throw bait in so the fish would gather around, and then they would throw the net in to get the big catch. So there was always bait involved. Always. Cool. Let's go a little further. In verse 19, then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two brothers, two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called on them, and immediately they did what? They left the boat and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame did what? Then his fame did what? Amen. Went through. In other words, it grew. Went through everywhere. All Syria. And they, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted in various diseases, torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them all. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee, from Decopole, and something like that, from Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the what? The Jordan. You know, this may sound strange. Jesus, first of all, was showing them, you know, how you catch fish, you use bait, right? Then he says, okay, we're going to use bait to catch men. Because you can't be a fisher of men without bait. Jesus told me, you will become fishers of men with signs, wonders, power, love, and truth. That will be bait. Does everybody get it? Anybody ever get healed? And many people wanted to know how you got healed. Now, don't get me wrong. Jesus healed people because he loved them. And then they became a witness. Amen? That witness became bait. Does everybody understand that? It drew people. Your testimony is bait. That's why God builds your testimony. What's it for? It's to help people come out of darkness and take the bait of light and be introduced to the presence of light, Jesus, and get filled with light 
so that they might see. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 38. The bait of deception. We're the bait of truth. We're the bait of salvation. We're the bait of freedom. Didn't the Lord said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water? Well, you're a water fountain. People want what you have if you're in the way of righteousness. Does everybody get it? But if you're not in the way of righteousness, they don't want what you have. Psalm 38 and verse 9. So there's got to be a consistency, doesn't there? Now the word says something powerful. It says that you and I are, and now don't take this wrong, Jesus was concerned. He said, why do, you, why do you obey all of these rules and regulations when you don't obey me? In other words, they were obeying the rules of the land, but they weren't obeying him. He said, aren't I above all of these rules of the land? Does everybody understand that? See, that's a relationship. Because God may tell you to just do something that people just won't get. Because they're not close enough to the Lord to see what God is doing. Amen? And that's where he wants to get us. And Psalm 38 and verse 9. Let's speak it. Lord, all my desire is before you, and my sign is not hidden from you. My heart pants, my strength fails me, for as the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My loved ones and my friends stood aloft from my plague, and my relatives stand afar off. Those also who seek my life lay what? Snares for me. How many of y'all know snares are bait? Those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan to what? Deception all day long. So the enemy, he's planning deception, but he's got to plant Bait before you can get to deception. Bait always comes before deception. You must bite the bait first. In verse 13, but I am like a what? A deaf man. Do, and do not what? Hear. And I am like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus I am like a man who does not hear and whose mouth is no response or reaction. For in you, O Lord, I hope. You will hear, O Lord, my God. For I said, hear me, lest they rejoice over me. Lest when my foot slips, they exalt themselves against me. <laughs> now that's powerful because what he was saying, I put myself in a position where I'm not hearing it. Why? Because many people bite the bait by what they hear. Why? When they agree. When they agree with the voice of the stranger, they just bit the bait. And then what happens is they speak. And what they agree with, they speak, and it comes to pass, and they don't realize because what you speak is what you what? Eat, and what you eat is what you become. And that's bait. He says, look at all day long, they plan deception, but they've got to get you with the bait first. So he says, I'm not deaf man. I won't hear it. I won't allow those voices to dictate. I won't agree with it. I won't speak it. My hope's in you. I look to you. I set you before me. You're my everything. Why? So he won't bite the bait. Does everybody get it? Let me tell you, when you take your eyes off the Lord, that's why David always said, I put the Lord before me. When you take your eyes off the Lord, you can be sure it's not far after that that you will bite the bait. And deception comes. And deception comes and you don't know it. That's why it's called deception. You don't know it. It causes a simple drift at a time. 
It's watering. The devil doesn't come to you and say, hi, I'm going to try and deceive you today. He gets you to bite the bait and then he waters it. Waters it, waters it, waters it, waters it, waters it, waters it. And he waits, waits, waits. And you don't even know you got hooks in your jaw. And it could go on for years. And then he pulls. Boom. What does he wait for? So he can affect more people in your life when we blow it. Does everybody get it? I'm telling you, it could go on for years. And the next thing you know, boom! I can't believe I got there. I can't believe I did this again. Man, I haven't been, I've been clean for 10, 20 years. I can't believe I blew it. Because you bit the bait and you allowed it to water, water, and water. Never going through self-deliverance. Never maintaining self-deliverance. Never doing that at self-examination. Associations. Approving things that you know better. That's eh, okay. Compromising things. Is everybody okay? He understood the bait of deception. He understood it. He understood about false agreements. But he did not react. Amen? He didn't bite the bait. Because if he would have, he would have started a way of unrighteousness. A way of ungodliness. But he responded in a righteous way by confession with godly agreement. Not by human agreement, carnal agreement, fleshy agreement, or soulish agreement. Oh, yes. Let's go to Amos, chapter 3. Oh, happy day. right after Joel. Amos. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Bait of deception. So he's always trying to get you in the area to where as you agree, he tries to entice us with a desire, especially with an emotion. It could be anything. Remember, the three categories are lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Those are the three categories. Amos 3, verse 3. Let's speak it. Can two walk together unless they what? Agree. Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has caught nothing? Will a bird fall into a snare on the earth where there is what? No trap for it. Will a snare spring up from the earth if it has caught nothing at all? For if a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people be afraid? If there is calamity in the city, will not the Lord have done it? Hmm. Again, will a bird fall into a snare on the earth where there is no, that's supposed to be bait for it or trap for it? Does everybody see that? That is considered, every trap is a bait. That trap, that bait will lead to deception. Bait comes in many forms to entrap the individual into a deceptive state of mind. It puts an individual in a, a deceptive state of mind. How many of you know when people come into fear, they're in a deceptive state of mind? Addiction is a deceptive state of mind. In Deuteronomy chapter 13, Deuteronomy 13. <clears throat> it 
The devil knows that if we bite bait, we can get him, as a believer, an emotional veil. It's an emotional veil. Deuteronomy 13 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder comes to pass of which he spoke to you, saying, let us go, af go after other gods which you have not known and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer or of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul. So he was even saying, look it, these signs were baits. Look at as the Antichrist begins to come more and more to pass, there's going to be, be more false signs. He said many Antichrists will come. Why? There'll be more false signs. There will be miracle signs and wonders but they will be following the wrong person. See, because for you and I, we know time and season. The world doesn't understand that. They will follow signs. Does everybody understand that? We know the time and season of Christ. We have the anointing. We know all things if we're truly filled with the Spirit of God. You will know all things. You will have night vision. You will know. Remember when he says, if they say go out here because the kingdom of God is here or there, don't go. If the Christ is here or there with all these signs and wonders, don't go. Why? Because it's bait. We know when, how the process is and what's going on with Jesus, Jesus' return. We know the sequences. We know the feasts of the Lord. We know all of these things that are going to happen, but the world doesn't, and many antichrist spirits are rising up all over. And some of them are being exposed that have been ministry for years. But we won't go there. Verse 4. He said, You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. Verse 5. But the, that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk so you shall put away the evil from your midst. If your brother, the son of your mother, your son or your daughter, the wife of your bosom or your friend who is as your own soul secretly entices you saying, let us go and serve other gods which you have not known, neither nor your fathers of the gods of the people which are all around you near to you or far from you, from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. You shall not consent to him, nor listen to him, nor shall your eye pity him, nor shall you spare him or conceal him, but you shall surely kill him. Your hand shall be first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people." Well, I can tell you right now, thank God it's not the Old Testament because there wouldn't be too many people left. <laughs> the Democratic Party would have been gone. Amen. It would have been annihilated. <laughs> the Democratic Party. Is everybody okay? Yeah. And all these antichrist individuals. Why? Because aren't they trying to... Look at what's going on. I don't know if people know about that. I, Baphomet, the statue of Baphomet, it's, a, it's a, an arch. I forgot, it weighs two or three tons or something like that. I don't know. They got the statue and this arch thing and whatever with it. They're, they're bringing it all over the world. They're shipping it all over the world at all of these governmental events. And they're putting it up there and people are worshiping it. They're causing these individuals to serve or follow other gods. 
all over. All over the world. It's happening. Everywhere. I don't know if you've heard of the skull and crossbones. The Illuminati and Masons and all. These are all individuals. These religions are all apart serving other gods. Serving Nephilim, Rephilims, false deities, demons. That's what the word tells us. Be careful that you don't be deceived or seduced by seduct seductive spirits of doctrines of demons. He, he warned us that in the last days, many people, they would have itching ears and they'll be turned away from the faith. Taking heed to these spirits. It's happening. That's a part of the storm. The word says that in the latter days, God will release a strong delusion. That they will follow other gods. Because he get, he's going to come to a time where it's over. Not that they will all receive the mark. They'll begin to follow other gods and all kinds of things are going to happen. And hope that they will come to their senses. But look at the image of the beast. People will begin to worship the image of the beast. It's a false god. It's already okay. Thank God, like I said, the Old Testament, they'll stone you to death. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to James chapter 1. Bait of deception. How many of you know you can be your own God? Yeah. Hallelujah. That's why the Lord says, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. That's why he says, forgive and bless everyone that persecutes you. He says, I will avenge you. You don't have to. Amen? He says, vengeance is mine. I like to see vengeance on evil. And we will. The Lord said that our eyes will see the reward of the wicked. Amen? Amen? But he's going to take care of it. We don't have to. We just need to expose it and drive it out. Hallelujah. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blesses the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Again, nor does God he himself tempt anyone. Temptation comes in an area before it even comes. I'm going to try and explain that. It's the same thing with a bait. Sometimes you can recognize the temptation. But I can tell you that there was bait before the temptation. And if you didn't bite the bait, when the temptation comes, you'll recognize it. If you bit the bait when the temptation comes, you won't recognize it. Listen, things are getting narrower and tighter now. In verse 14, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own what? Desires or enticed desires our emotions I mean that is the big battle isn't it it's an emotional battle those who live out their emotions are the most dangerous people you don't know where they're gonna come and go you don't know where they're gonna be stable in fact you can't trust them I mean every one of them in this room knows someone that they've associated with in their life that they would say they would do something and you can never count on them to do it because every time something comes up, they always got an excuse. And it's usually because how they feel. Yeah. Verse 15. It says, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. Death. 
So we know entices with a desire to fulfill a want of emotion. Into Now that's the bait that goes into deception, which leads to destruction and death. So when an individual bites the bait of deception, it brings deception. But you first must bite the bait. 2 Corinthians 12. Nobody falls into deception without biting the bait first. Second Corinthians twelve twenty. Second Corinthians twelve twenty. Let's speak it. For I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I wish, and that I shall be found by you such as you do not wish, lest there be contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, backbitings, whisperings, conceits. And tumults. Lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and I shall mourn for many who have sinned before and have not repented of the uncleanness, fornication, and lewdness which they have practiced. So what he's saying here is here's this, here's the bait. Contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, and selfish ambitions are all bait that bring deception. Does everybody see that? Selfish ambitions, we labor on, uh, these are individuals that are laboring onto self and not onto the Lord. That's where the word says something very important. We must deny ourselves, pick up the cross and fight and follow. That is the formula of escape. Always denying yourself. Denying what you want first. Why? You're acknowledging the Lord. Lord, what do you want? It's not what I want. What do you want? When things get donated to us, whenever I always ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want to do with this? What do you want to do? Because I don't care. I want what he wants, not what I want. Amen? And we've got to get to that point. It doesn't matter. We must deny ourselves, fight and follow. Everyone say fight, fight. and follow. Because there is no follow without no fight. Amen. And what are you fighting for? The righteous way? Does everybody get it? You're fighting for the righteous way. Not the deceptive way. Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Is everybody okay? Everybody cool? Are you getting this? Yes. Hallelujah. I hope you didn't... Don't bite the bait now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 25. Therefore, putting away what? Lying. Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. What does it say? Be angry and do not what? Don't sin. And do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So that was a warning, wasn't it? People get angry when they get offended, when something happens, or there's something that doesn't go their way or whatever. They get angry. Anger is nothing but a protector of pride. It's also a protector of lying spirits. And pride protects self, which is the offspring of darkness. So when people have an anger issue, they have a demon issue. Oh, it's just my character. No, you've just been living with that demon so long, you think it's your character. Amen. It's not the character of Christ. Christ had a righteous anger. 
Not a selfish anger. Not a bitter anger. Not a judgment anger. Amen? Although he will have a wrath at the end. <laughs> but it's still a righteous wrath. Let's go a little further. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, what is good that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. These are all baits to deception. Every one of these is a bait to deception. Does everybody see that? Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16 and verse 17. Let's speak it. The highway of the upright is to what? Depart from evil. So are they walking in the right way, the righteous way then? Yes, because they haven't bitten the bait. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. But to be of a humble spirit with the lowly, better to be with a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. In other words, he who puts it to practice. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. He will have joy because he knows he's pleasing God. In other words, we want to avoid the bait of deception of pride and stay on the righteous way. 2 Timothy 3. Bait of deception. Second Timothy chapter three. Eve bit the bait of deception, then gave the bait to her husband. That bait's still flying around. <laughs> verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Is everybody there? But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. In other words, there's going to be a lot of bait thrown all over the place. For men will be what? Lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. How many of y'all know that love of money is bait? Bribes. They'll be boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good and traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Why? Because they bit the bait. They will have a form of godliness, but they will deny his power because they're not willing to walk in the right way. And from such people do what? Turn away, cut them loose. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men, women, children, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. Always learning, always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, they always holding on to the bait of deception. They can't get rid of it, even though they're learning, learning, learning. They're always biting the bait. 
That means they can't prosper. They can't grow because that deception stunts your growth. Verse 8. Now as Janus and Jabers resisted Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be made manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, and perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which to me at Antioch, at Icium, and Lystra. Which, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord did what? Deliver them. Delivered them. All baits of deception. But we know the righteous way to walk. In 2 Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter one and verse three. Let's speak it. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, is without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. And when I, recall, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a what? and a sound mind. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. So we see here that the spirit of fear is big bait. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. Amen? Fear. I'm going to close at Matthew 5. Bait of Satan. Again, if you're not filled with the Spirit, you can't discern. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 13, bait of deception. Let's speak it. You are the what? salt of the earth. And if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Salt is bait. Does everybody get it? We are the salt. What are we baiting? The world. Why? What does salt do? Causes you to thirst. Amen? It also stings. And there's something else it does. It preserves. You are, verse 14, you are the light. Is light bait? Yeah. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under the basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works glorify and glorify your Father in heaven. 
Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to what? Fulfill. Fill. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass away from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, unless your righteousness, which is the way of walk, exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said of those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of ju judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Rachel, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, you shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and, and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. So there is a process, isn't there? And in this process, in repentance and false agreeing with things, we must discern these areas so that we don't bite the bait. When you're offended, get rid of it. Don't let the enemy water it. You know, look, you can be offended by somebody not living up to your expectations. You can't allow that to happen. We have children that we want to live up to our expectations. But we can't allow that to bring offense. We have to cut it loose. That's why he says, cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Why? Because the devil is seeking whom he can devour. And it says he's got a big mouth, right? He's a roaring lion. He's got a big mouth. That's all he's trying to do is entice us, trying to plant a corruptible seed so he can create an emotion, bring an emotional veil. That's why we bring people through the process of breaking all emotional attachments. It's important. But let me tell you, if it hasn't been broke, you keep breaking it until it's broke off. You know when it's gone. And you believe that it's gone. You accept that it's gone. That's why we have the process of exchange, exchanging it. Amen? In these areas, we must warfare to be free. If you don't fight, you can't follow. And if you're not a fighter... You're not going to follow on the way. You'll be misled. Because a fight, when a person doesn't fight, they bite the bait. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Again, we ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace of every bait that we've bitten. We ask that you remove the hooks in our jaw and all the emotional attachments established with them and enticements that we've agreed with. Lord, we ask that you cut us loose not only from ourselves, from all the entanglements and affairs of this world, mindsets and strongholds, in any way whatsoever, the fears and angers and frustrations and every bait of deception, Lord, we sever from us and cast those associated spirits from us into the pit, breaking their power off so that we do not fall into the mindset of deception but we follow the way of righteousness to be a sign and wonder and a salt and light to the earth for your glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.